Many languages, including JavaScript, have a notion of object or records that combines a bunch of values, each of which is tagged by a field name. So here uh, in this little fragment of JavaScript code, I'm defining O to be a literal object that has a, an X field whose value is one and a Y field whose value is gonna be two. And then we use the dot operator in JavaScript to take an object and look up its field. Um, I'm not gonna use methods, I'm just using these objects as a kind of record. So I'm looking up the field X here and getting one and the field Y and getting two. Another thing you can do in JavaScript is if you have an object like O, you can change the, the value of one of the fields by using the equal operator. So O.X equals five. After we do that, then the, the object's field value of one um, changes to a five so that anyone who looks at it later will see the five. This is an imperative update that involves state. So it's not just that the variable O is changed so that it has a five inside of it. Any other part of the, the program that might have a reference to the same object will see this update when we change the value of X. So it's a, a generalization of boxes and that it can have multiple fields. There's an alternative to this kind of design, and so I'm, I'm using JavaScript notation here, but this is not JavaScript. It's a different kind of language where uh, the equal operator, instead of changing the existing object, gives us a new object back that has the difference in it that we requested. So here O will stay an object where X is 1 and Y is 2, but P will be an object where X is 5. So even after we, we do this assignment-like statement, uh, we get a new record or a new object back P. If we look at P.X, we get 5. If we look at O.X, it's still going to be 1. Uh, meanwhile, P get all, gets all the other fields of O, uh, so the P.Y is still 2. This kind of uh, update for a record is called a functional update. It's functional because it, it doesn't involve state. We haven't changed O in any way. Uh, instead, we got a new object back. And we're gonna look at both of these kinds of update uh, for curly. We're gonna start by implementing functional update first. So to do this, to, add, to make this extension of curly, I need to add something like JavaScript's literal record notation. So we're going to do that. Uh, of course, we're going to use an open curly brace and we're gonna use a keyword record here to be the record form for creating a literal record. And then we'll group a field name with an expression uh, using curly braces. So this is creating a record that has an X field and a Y field where the X value is one and the Y value is two, just like the JavaScript snippet above. In JavaScript, after you create an object, um, you can assign it to a, a variable name. Uh, we do the same thing with let. Record is just going to be an expression uh, records are values, and so we can put the record expression on the right-hand side of a let binding O, and then we'll be able to refer to O to refer to that record. In JavaScript, when you look up a field, you use the, the dot operation. Uh, in curly, we are going to use a keyword, as usual, after a curly brace. So uh, dot will be translated to get, where there's an expression for the object and then the name of the field that you want to get out. So this expression, O, is assumed to be a record, and if it's a record that, with an X field, then we'll get the X field out. Just to put those two pieces together, uh, if we bind O to be the literal object and look up the field X in JavaScript, our curly syntax will look like this. We're letting O be a record, and then we're getting the X field out of that record. So, of course, we expect to get a 1 out as a result of this expression. The functional update notation that we hypothesized before, we're going to use a set form for that. So open curly brace set then a first expression to give us an object, a name of a field whose value we want to be different or added into the new record, and uh, the value that goes in that new record. So for example, if I create a record R1 that has A as 2 and B as 4, and then I use set on R1 to change the A to a 5, that doesn't change R1, it gives us a new record, R2. This is the functional update part. And then if we get the A out of R1, we'll get a 2 out, but if we get an A from R2, we'll get a five out. So the, the final answer here will be seven. That's because again, this set did not change R1. It just gave us a new value for R2 back. So in other words, set creates a new record every time with the new field value, keeping all of the old field values uh, for the other fields uh, in the given object.